No, it is. Okay. And we'll start the same way I did the last time. Uh, Victor has heard this. You haven't. You're the only two who have signed up for this course. And both of, the good news is both of you have paid. Uh, the question is, would you be able to take it in the spring without undue hardship? Uh, you can drop add something else. Were you going to be here in the spring? Uh, I think so. I think so. Have you already got a full load for spring, or oh, you do? Is there something you could take then now and take this in the spring? Now, Victor, but let's not leave you out. Did are you? you I would prefer to take it this semester, but if not. You can. You will be back in the spring. That wasn't my plan. Oh, it wasn't your plan? Okay. Well, we'll run it then. I don't want to cause any major problem. Okay? So we'll run the course. Okay. I mean, I mean if it's better, I can wait. So. Yeah, but you would have to come and just take that one class? Okay, were you planning to go on and transfer somewhere else starting in the spring? UAB, UAB in the spring? I, I think it's better to go on and let you, let you finish. So are you happy with that too? Yes, sir. All right. So far I haven't been able to lose a single class. <laughs> I've got so far three classes, I think, with one student. No, with two students each. One of them has three, but one of them not paid. But uh, well, actually one class has just two in it. Neither one of them are paid, but one of them is here today. And the other one, I think, is going to be here. I've had her before, so I've had both of you before. And I've had both of the previous class before. Uh, the one class that has three in it, that guy has signed up for several classes, but has never shown. <laughs> so I, I don't have a whole lot of faith in him continuing, but you folks, I do. I know will. Then I also have linear algebra tomorrow, which has only one or two students in it. So I think. Uh, Jasmine was one student who was going to be in it. I don't know if there are any others. So we may have to postpone that one. But we're okay with this. All right. Now, this obviously isn't the correct, so, I mean, the correct subject, but it's the wrong year. I mean, wrong term. Uh, because I didn't know if the class was going to make it or not, so I didn't want to redo the syllabus. But I will redo it. And this will say fall 2017. This part's the same. Uh, Math 238, applied differential equations 1 three hour course, the meeting times, this is wrong, okay, the meeting times are Monday, Wednesday, 2 to 3.15, right, okay, uh, the room's right, A255, the building's right, the campus is right, okay, uh, the instructor, I guess, is wrong, or usually not, but whatever, okay, it's me, Charles Fowler, my email is cfowler.bostonstate.edu, uh, you probably heard this before. Um, we had a week off between terms, and then last week we were in meetings most of the time. And when I was, had the week off, we were out of state, and the place where we are had terrible Wi Fi. So I could not keep up with emails, so I'm way behind on emails right now. And catching up is going to be a tough thing to do because we're trying to get everything done at the first of the term. I'm also the math department chair. I'm trying to hire two instructors this week. <laughs> so, uh, because I had one instructor got married and is going out of the country for a year. Another instructor got a full-time job at A&M. These are both adjunct instructors. Another adjunct couldn't do an afternoon class called with a job. So, I uh, was having to come up with a bunch of, uh, I had to hire two new instructors. So. Uh, it's it's been sort of tough, and I still don't have. I, hopefully, the one I'm got hired today, but we did all the paperwork we could on Thursday, on Friday. But some people were not in the office, so we couldn't get signatures. Hopefully, they got done today. So it's just been crazy, and it will continue being crazy most of the week. My phone is nine two nine three four four nine. That's my office phone, and I would ask you. I think both of you were in class before to hear this before. I'm so far behind in voicemails. I'm behind in email, but just a little bit. Voicemails are hopeless almost, you know. 
because nothing that came in over the break I've been able to, to sit down and try to answer. So please don't leave a voicemail until I get some of those cleared. I'll let you know if that ever happens. <coughs> so try to call during my office hours. The other thing is these office hours aren't correct, but I'll tell you what they are. Uh, because if I'm not in the office, I'm teaching. If I'm teaching, I can't hear my phone ring and I can't interrupt and go and get it, even if I could hear it. Okay, so the 3449 is my office phone. Now, Fridays, I'm on the Birmingham campus. This is the office phone there. It's also 929-6409. But don't leave a message there either for a different reason. That's not my phone, okay? It's the phone in the office where I am on Friday, but somebody else uses that office Monday through Thursday, and that phone's in her. She can do email, uh, voicemail from it. I can't. So if you leave a message, I can't get to it, and she'll say, what in the world is this, okay? So uh, don't leave a voicemail on the Friday phone either, okay? Now, my office hours, these are incorrect. Let me tell you what they are. Monday, Wednesday morning at 8, I have an absolutely packed to the gills and actually overflowing Math 100 class. That's 8 to 9 to 10. And then I have my Cal, 1, uh, Cal 2 class from 9.30 until 11.10. That one's not packed to the gills, not overflowing at all. Right now it has two people in it. But that guy really needs to stay on track to be able to finish in time. So we always have to meet that. So from 11.15 until 12.15, I'm going to try to eat lunch. So I'm in the office then. You can call then. If you don't get me, don't leave a message. Just hang up and try back again in five or ten minutes, as long as you're between in the 11.15 to 12.15 time frame. At 12.15, my Calculus 3 class starts, and it goes until uh, 1.55. Uh, except today we went down to the Eclipse, missed most of it, but uh, the last few minutes of class, that's why we weren't here when we came in. So uh, then from 2 o'clock until 3.15 is this class with only two people, and the Cal 3 only had two people in it, and the... Uh, but after 3.15, I'm free for the rest of the time. Now, not today. Today, I've got to leave a, between 4.15 and 4.30 because I've got a meeting on the, in Birmingham at 5. So I've got to leave between 4.15 and 4.30 to make that meeting at 5. I can be a little late, but I, I don't want to be too much. Uh, but for the rest of the term, on Mondays and Wednesdays, I'll be 5.15 on Monday and Wednesday. Okay? So that's my biggest chunk of office hours on Monday and Wednesday. 3.15 to 5.15, okay. Tuesday, Thursday, I have a tack jam full Math 112 class, pre-calculus algebra, followed by a decently populated Math 113, so far like 17, 18 students, I think, and that's from 9.30 until 10.45, and then I have the fiscal, uh, the uh, linear algebra class, and I don't know how many people are in that. The last time I looked, it was only one or two, and I'm hoping maybe I'll be able to, to postpone that until the fall, until spring term. If I can, then my office hours will be from 10.45 until 12.15. And then I'll have lunch from 12.15 to 1.15. And then at 1.15, I have a physical science class in here, which has more than 20 students in it. And so that, I know that one's going to make. It's a mini term class, so it goes from 115 until 345, then the lab is 345 until 545, and then I leave sometime around 6. So if you want to hang around and catch me between 545 and 6, I'll be up here shutting down the lab or whatever. All that's on the Bessemer campus. Okay, now when second mini term rolls around, that afternoon physical science class doesn't start at 115, it starts at 315. So then I will have some more office hours in the afternoon uh, from 1, uh, 1.15 to 3.15. Uh, so that will open up office hours a little bit. But that means I'm here until 7.45 at night, leaving around 8. Okay. And my office is here on Bassman Campus at 265. Both of you know where that is. Right? Okay. Now on Fridays, I put here 11, 7.45 to 11.45. 
on the Birmingham campus. That may change uh, because my second mini-term physical science class is an overload. I have to do extra hours for that overload, and that overload is uh, two and a half, four and a half hours a day, two days a week. So that's nine extra hours a week for uh, for the second mini term. So I'm probably going to do about four and a half extra hours on on first mini term, and about four and a half extra hours on the second mini term a week, so that I can. Cover that. So if that puts me past 11:45, I'll let you know. I haven't worked out those kind of complicated numbers yet. All right, here's the course description. Now, we didn't write this. This was something developed by the four-year the four-year colleges and university, public colleges and university in the state of Alabama, and the two-year college system, which of course is public as well. And they said that if we teach this, they give you credit. So here's what it says, an introduction to numerical methods, qualitative behavior of first order differential equations, techniques for solving separable linear and linear equations analytically, and applications to various models, populations, motion, chemical mixtures, that kind of stuff. Uh, techniques for solving higher order linear differential equations with constant coefficients, the general theory, undetermined coefficient, reduction of order, and the method of variation of parameters, and we'll hit all of those a little bit, with emphasis on interpreting the behavior of the solutions and applications to physical models whose governing equations are of higher order. The Laplace transform as a tool for the solution of the initial value problems whose inhomogeneous terms are discontinuous. Okay, what a statement. Okay, we'll break that down into something a little more reasonable uh, in just a minute. The prerequisites are Math 227 now. Uh, Victor is taking it as a co-requisite. There will be one place where we'll hit something that we will not have covered already in Cal 3, and I'll just have to fill you in on that. And I'm pretty sure we got that covered in when we took Cal 3 before. Yeah, we did. So it won't be a problem for you, but and it's not a problem. It's pretty straightforward. Okay, but there is one place where you really do need is partial derivatives. And we'll hit those in here before we'll hit them in there. So I'll just move that up a little bit. Okay, the textbook is this. It, they say required text and it's fine. Whoops, that's calculus. Um, here's Ah, there it is. Let me get this out of the way. In fact, let me get this out of the way. In fact, before I forget it, let me put this in the back. Uh, Dr. Bryant and I share books, so uh, we only got questions.
no Dr. Bryant was here, and I was just going to close that door, and then we got the yak. Okay, I shouldn't have left this home, but I thought it was just going to be a moment. Okay, but here's the text. All right, this is the instructor edition. Yours will look similar, but not quite the same. Uh, but it's a first course in differential equations with modeling applications. It's tip. Oh, we're up to 11th edition. I've got to change that now. Uh, do any of you have the 10th? Okay, well then I think the bookstore probably has the 11th. Okay, uh, so I've got to change that. And that will change the date of it, but everything else will be the same. Zill is the author. It's a Cengage, Brooks Cole Cengage, and the copyright date is going to be updated. Uh, you'll need a graph. You don't have to have a graphing calculator, but it may help. Paper, graph paper, and pencil. We'll be using all that. Now, if you prefer ink and want to use ink and not pencil, that's fine with me. But when I do differential equations, believe me, I make mistakes. So you'll see that in the flash that looks like a bit of my class before, too. Now, I think I've been through the blackboard paragraph every class you've been in, so you need that anymore. Okay. Student learning outcomes. Okay. Uh, students will find solutions to first order differential equations, including separable equations, linear first order equations, and applications with various models. So that's where we begin. And if you turn in your book, uh, especially that part about models, uh, that is in chapter one. There's only three sections there, uh, so we'll do chapter one. A lot of it, because 1.1 is definitions of terminology, differential equations has some terminology that you don't find in calculus, okay? So we'll do chapter one. It's a very short chapter. Try to get that knocked out pretty quickly and I'll give you a test for that then. Here I say one and two. I've got to change this around. Chapter one, test. Okay? And then we'll do chapter two, first order differential equations. And if you look here, they have separable equations and they have linear equations. Something they don't mention here are exact equations. We'll do exact equations as well. Uh, and we may not do the whole all the sections, but we'll do at least those. Now, chapter, uh, chapter three is modeling with first order differential equations. Um, because we already did some in 1.3, I will tend to skip that to get to the higher order differential equations. Uh, and that's what uh, number two says. Uh, so chapter four will fulfill number two. Students will solve linear differential, linear Equations of higher order, okay, including equations with constant coefficients and undetermined coefficients. Um, but remember, in the course description, they mention uh, reduction of order. So we'll do that. We'll do homogeneous equations and non-homogeneous equations. Reduction of order, uh, constant coefficients, and undetermined coefficients. Now there's two approaches to undetermined coefficients. I've taught them both and I feel like the students seem to understand uh, superposition better. So that's what we'll do 4.4 but probably not do 4.5. And then if we have time we'll do 4.6 which is variation of parameters um, which I think, let me go back yeah uh, reduction of order and method of variation of parameters. Okay, so uh, we will probably do uh, 4.6 as well if we have time. Okay, uh, then if there is time, we will do chapter 7, which is Laplace transform. Okay, and let me get back down here. Okay. Uh, so students will use Laplace transform methods to solve initial value problems with discontinuous functions. Okay. Now, if we have time, 
will then go back and use numerical methods to approximate decision and systems. And again, I want to go back and make sure that's in the course description. Uh, yeah, it's following up what we did in chapter one, numerical methods. If we don't have time for it, we won't do it. You know, it's, uh, because we already would have hit it in, in chapter one. Uh, I think it was. No, chapter two, 2.6, numerical method. Not the best, but we'll at least have touched it. So whether we get to nine or not, that's unnecessary. We will have a, students will use numerical methods to approximate um, solutions to systems. Why do I have, I think someone else wrote this and I have not gone back and changed. I don't think there's anything here about systems, is it? I may take that one out because we haven't, I haven't been able to get that far and I don't think that's in the uh, course description. Do you see it in there? Okay, I think I'm going to take that one out. Okay. Uh, I didn't see that in there, so I'm going to probably take that one out. We never get that far anyway. And students will research and write on topic differential equation. That's your writing competency, and then the overall competency will be your last test, which will basically be combining everything. Okay. Evaluation and assessment. Okay, I think you've seen this before. Research paper counts as a test. That test cannot be dropped, so that's required. Your last test cannot be dropped. That's going to be the overall competency. So we should have one or two in between that, maybe more, and the lower of those can be dropped if it helps your score. Okay? And then the grading scale is, as always, stay up here, folks. Okay. Attendance, try to be here every day. There's only two of you here. If both of you are out, I have to talk to myself. I don't particularly like doing that. It's pretty boring uh, having to listen to me. Y'all know that. I, never mind. Okay. Uh, so I will try to, but I'll keep doing I'll just record it and put it out there. Now, maybe I'll go faster those days if y'all aren't here to ask questions or, you know, for me to ask you questions. So, uh, behoove you to be here, but y'all, y'all are both good attenders. Okay. Um, make up work since everything's going to be take home. How do you make that up anyway? I encourage you to try to get your test in. Excuse me. My throat's <clears throat> really sore. I was talking all day. Uh, try to encourage you to get your work in within a week of when I give it out. Some of the tests are going to be pretty hard to do that way. So just try to get them in before I give you the next test. Okay? Especially since what you do on the first test may, if you make errors on that and don't turn it in until the day I give you the second test, then, or after I've given you the second test, you may make the same mistakes again because I haven't been able to get your test back to you in time. Okay, so try to get it in um, within a week if possible, but as soon thereafter, but definitely before the next test starts. So, uh, we'll probably begin all the classes right on time because we'll have Cal 3 right before this, Victor Cal, I'll, I'll let him leave the room. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, and uh, I've only got five minutes in between, so if that's not time enough to go get something to drink and use the restroom, I'll be starting very soon. State on discrimination and harassment. Uh, I think you've read that in every syllabus you've seen, right? Any questions on that? We don't condone it. We don't put up with it. Don't let it happen. Let us know if you think it's happening somewhere. Americans with Disabilities. This is sort of a new one. I can't remember if we had them in the spring or not. Had the same statement in the spring. I know we had it in the summer, but I just can't remember about spring. But this is new wording 
and somehow they changed their spacing of the font, and I can't figure out how to get this back. They told us we had to use this, but it came across wacko, okay? Uh, but it does have some new phone numbers and things like this, plus location information here that they didn't used to have, okay? Now, obviously, the ca course calendar, this was last summer. I'll change this for the fall. I've already got it done. I just need to cut and paste. I didn't know if this class was going to make it or not, okay? And the last thing, of course, is the acknowledgement form. Once you, once I've got it, all the corrections made, uh, my office hours, all that kind of stuff done. A few minor changes we saw in there. Once all that's done, and I put it on Blackboard, then if you'll, uh, if you see anything else that you have some questions about, ask. If not, print this page or type it in and email it to me, either one, and that. It's not okay. What's that? It's not okay. No, 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 because I don't have the, I don't even know what my office hours are yet until I meet with tomorrow's classes, okay? But once I have that, then I'll have two hours Wednesday afternoon. I won't have any office hours uh, tomorrow to speak of, but two hours on Wednesday. If I can get it updated by then, I will. If not, it'll be Friday probably, because Thursday I have no office hours to speak of either. Unless, of course, the linear algebra class doesn't make, then I'll have an hour and 15 minutes that I don't have right now. All right, any questions on the syllabus? All right, I don't think I'll need that anymore, so I'll end that one. And this is the research paper. And I know you've seen this, ew, in the courses you've had from me. All right. Any questions on any of this? You pick a topic. There is one change. I forgot to say this in the last class, I think. I can't remember. I said it three or four times a day. I've forgotten which time I said it. Um, one change. I used to tell you when you give me that piece of paper with your research topic name, you may give me a phone number or two or three, whatever you think I need. Now they're saying we should get not just the phone number, but your best email address. If you don't use the Lawson email, we want to know which one you do, okay? If you use them both, I've got your Lawson, but if you do want us to send things to your other email address, please let us know what that is, okay? And they want at least one best phone number, okay? I suggest you give me one, two, or three, how many you want to, but they want us to get at least one from every student, okay? The best email and best phone number they're requiring now, so go on and put it on this with your research topic, okay? That's the only change there. Um, the setup for it, how long, that kind of stuff, any questions on that? Okay. Is it going to be on Blackboard? That's my... Yeah, I, I've got... Just a couple little corrections to make on this, and then I'll put it on black. Okay? Uh, you'll see what they are in just a second. Uh, those are other things that you might lose points for, so pay attention to that. And the paper is due by the last day of class, which for this course, I think, is the last Wednesday in December. Okay? And if it's anything after that last Wednesday in December, I'm sorry, first Wednesday in December, first Wednesday. If there's anything after that, then you start losing points. If it's during finals week, you're losing points. You know? So please get it to me before rather than later. Okay? And then that's the stick. Here's the carrot. If you get it to me that last week, i said it again, the first week in December, which is the last week that it's due, you get no bonus points. You just get your score. If you get it to me any time in November, you get your score plus one bonus point. If you get it to me any time in October, you get your base score plus two bonus points. If you turn it in any time during the month of September, you get your base points plus three bonus points. 
And if you get it to me this week or next week, anytime during August, then you get four bonus points. That's almost half a letter grade right there. So please try to get me your paper earlier rather than later. Okay? And just a reminder, okay, I should go back to one of those. Remember what constitutes a page of text? It's not just on one piece of paper. It must start wherever you start that first paragraph on the first page. You must go to the bottom of that page and on the second page down at least as far as that first line of your first page. That's a page of text. So it's always going to be at least two page, two pieces of paper. Can't get any less than that. Okay. All right. And then when you submit your paper, please attach a single page from one of your sources. If you have two or three or more sources, fine. But just pick one source and print me or copy me a single page from that source. Okay? Any questions? The research paper. Same stuff, stuff, type stuff you've always seen, but uh, just that's the main thing I'd rather change there, changing the name of the months. Okay? All right, that's the last time I'll need that today, so I'm going to close that one. Next, I want to show you my locator card. This is pretty much up to date now based on what my schedule appears to be now. It may change, but for now, this is fall and first mini term. Okay, my name is Charles Fowler, my phone number is that, my email is that. Okay. And here is, I'm so sorry, I'm, my throat hurts like crazy. <clears throat> As I've said before, my uh, Math 100 class, full to the gills, Monday, Wednesday, 8 to 9, 15. My Math 126, empty to the gills. Right now, either two or three students in it, I don't remember which, I think it's two, uh, but one of them needs it to uh, stay on track for his graduation. Then I have lunch from 11.15 to 12.15, which most of the time I don't leave the classroom much before that, and I try to get back here before that, so it's not a full lunch hour, but close to it. Uh, today I had less than half of it, but that's fine. Um, then I have Cal 3 right before this from 1215 to 155. I've only got a five minute break before this class, 238, and it goes until 315. And then at 315, I start my, basically my only office hours of the day, though I'm in the office at lunch too, uh, from 315 to 515, except for today. Okay, today I'll probably be leaving between 430 and 445. I just got a so I have an appointment in Birmingham at 5 that I can be a little late to, but uh, uh, I want to uh, get there as soon as I can. So I'm going to have to leave campus and be more bright than tea. Okay, makes sense, right? Okay, Tuesday and Thursday. Like I said before, I have an absolutely packed down full, overflowing math 112 class. A good size math 113. Again, only one or two students in this class, so that may be one that I'll be losing. Kind of hope so, but we'll see. And then right now, if I keep this class, it's 11 until 1215, and then my lunch is 1215 to 115, though never be able to start it at 1215 anymore. Uh, you would not, don't want to end it at 115 because I don't want to be up in the classroom at 115. So. But for the first mini term, my physical science class is a full class, uh, not packed full, but more than 20 students. Um, and it goes because it's a mini term, 115 until 345. Then the lab starts, and that's 345 until 545. And then I'm off campus at uh, 6 o'clock on Tuesday and Thursday. Now, when second mini term rolls around, the Physical Science 112 won't start until 3.15, which gives me a good chunk of office hours here, two more office hours here and there that I don't currently have. But it also puts me here until 8 uh, 
o'clock at night, uh, which two more hours than what I'm doing now. Okay? And then on Friday, Friday, and it's Birmingham campus, uh, academic building that's B122, completely office hours from at least from 745 to 1145. However, I may extend those a little bit, like I said before, to give me enough hours so my second mini term, uh, whatever you call it, overload class, I make up the hours I need for that. Uh, now, Just because I say I'm in the office from 7.45 to 11.45, that's technically true, except they love calling meetings on Fridays. And therefore, the odds are at least one and probably two Fridays a month, I'm going to be involved in some meeting sometime. Now, most of the time, they're not really big on early morning meetings, uh, sometimes their meetings may be early afternoon, so that may eat into my office hours as well, either one of those. Uh, Mid-morning would eat into it, so, uh, so I will have meetings on Friday as well, so I won't be guaranteed to be in the office those times, but at least that's what I put on paper. All right, any questions on my locator card? Okay. As soon as I can, I'll get this out on Blackboard too, but I'll probably get all the corrections made on the syllabus and the research paper stuff first before I put this there. Well, no, I'm going to wait until after tomorrow I find out what happens to the linear algebra class. So it won't be out there today. Probably won't be out there tomorrow because I have no time to put it in tomorrow until probably Wednesday afternoon. I'll try to let you know what it's going to be Wednesday. But don't sell it until you ask. Okay. Next. Yeah. It's behind Dr. Fritz. Yeah. In his suite of offices behind the secretary's desk. Okay. Now, the other thing we need to talk about today is safety. Now, I know both of you have been in classes of mine before. You remember all the deal about safety. Okay? Quick rehash. If it's something external, weather, tornadoes, thunderstorms, anything that you hear the siren goes off, then we go down and in. Interior room, lowest level. Okay? You know the path to take to get there, right? Okay. If it's something inside the building, we need to get out, like fire or chemical spill or something like that. We need to get out of the building. And you know the, the steps to do to get out. If it were to start in this room, then we have a couple extra steps. Notify, as in campus police, if you've got it. And by the way, I meant to say this on the other classes, but I just remembered. If you will, Take down this number, 426-3654. That, at least what it was last term, or last spring, the Lawson State Police Department. Not a bad number to put in as a speed dial or however you call it on your cell phone. So if you had an emergency and you needed to get in touch with someone uh, right away, someone always has this cell. This is a cell number that the duty police have on their bodies at all times. Okay? So therefore, there's always going to be someone at that number. Now, that's as long as someone's here. Do y'all know if they keep 24-hour and weekend police? I don't know either. If maybe no one's here, then you're not going to get anyone at that number, but then you wouldn't be able to get them anyway. They're not here. But that is the most reliable. I never knew that until last term. An instructor had been trying to reach somebody, and they had called the number that's listed in the directory. Well, that number listed in the directory is a, is a phone on an office desk. Well, if that 
guy who's not at his desk at that time is going to voicemail. If it's an emergency, that's not very good, okay? But this is the number he said that the duty policeman has every time. So something else for safety that I didn't know before. All right. Any other questions? Now, one thing about this class that has not been true about any of the classes, either one of you have been in before. This book does not have PowerPoints with it. So everything I do in this course is going to be written on the screen. And this is a small screen, okay? So it gets a little messy, okay? But y'all been in my class before, everything gets messy. Don't agree to fit quick with that, okay? All right. Okay. So that's it for here. So I'm going to close that. And I'm going to close this. And I'm going to close this. And I'm going to open this. Oh my goodness gracious. One thing I have not had enough of today is water. <clears throat> so I think before we get started on here, I need to run down the hall. Like I said, my throat was hurting, and uh, I want to go back to go and get something to drink. And uh, so let me pause this. Okay, <clears throat> so I'm going to get something a bit stronger than water, like a Coke or tea or something. But let's just go with this. Differential equations. What do they mean to you? When we did, wherever you did, Cal 1, what back then we called the differential is when we wrote something like as unto this. dy is equal to x squared dx. That was written in differential form. Okay? Uh, you could have had the dy's and dx's on both sides of the equation. It could have been something like d, let's put it another way, x dx plus y squared dy is equal to 0, or 1, or 17, or pi halves, or whatever, okay? Those would be differential equations because we wrote those in differential forms. We didn't write derivative forms. Differential equations, however, mostly, not always, we will do some that are written just like this, okay? Exactly like this, okay? But most of the time, our differential equations are really derivative equations, except we don't call them that, we call them differential equations, okay? Now, that's the differential part. The equation part, just like I have listed here, you have to have an equal sign, okay? Otherwise, it's not an equation. It's just a differential operation or something like that, but not an equation, okay? Now, if you also recall, there's several ways to write derivatives. Name a few. dy dx is certainly one. What do you say? X prime. x prime, you said? Yeah, okay, that would be fine. Um, that same thing could be df dx, if y is equal to f, okay, some function of x, okay. So yeah, there's lots of different ways to write a differential, a derivative, 
So therefore, there's lots of ways to write a differential equation. Okay? Here's one. y double prime plus 2y prime plus y is equal to zero. That is a differential equation. Okay? Um, and generally we understand, and why they have gone to phi's rather than else, but they do, that y is equal to some phi of x. When you say prime, you usually mean with respect to x, a derivative with respect to x. It could be with respect to t, if you're talking about time, or some other variable, but generally we have it as a function of x. Uh, if you write it in this form, it's obvious. Dependent variable, independent variable. And you know exactly what it is. This could be the function of the independent variable, and that's the independent variable. Okay? It's obvious if you write it in this form. In this form, quite often we call the Leibniz form. And you do d by d. Okay? Uh, that we usually call differential form. This we just call the prime form. Okay? All those are legitimate. Okay. Now, let's look. 1.1 is going to be focusing almost completely on definitions and terminology. We'll do a little bit of differential equations, but mostly just talking about definitions and, and, and terminology. Okay? Uh... I'm going to continue with what I did. This dy dx, okay, if that y was some function phi of x, okay, then another way we could have written that dy dx would be phi prime of x. Because dy dx would be phi prime of x. So you see we mix and match the variables, the independent, the dependent variable with the function notation is pretty flexible there. Okay? Now, I'm going to write a differential equation. So I think I'll start with clean slate here. Here is a differential equation. No, I'm sorry. This is a, an exponential function y is equal to e to the 0 0.1 x squared. Okay? That is an equation. Now they're telling us that is a is differentiable where? Where is that equation differentiable? Everywhere. All real numbers. Exponential functions defined from x equal negative infinity to x equal positive infinity. It's a nice, smooth, continuous function. Has no breaks, no discontinuities, nothing problem. No points, no cusp, no corners. Nice, smooth, continuous function. So that's defined everywhere. From negative infinity to positive infinity. So its interval of definition would be from negative infinity to positive infinity. Positive infinity. There we go. Okay. Now, you tell me what dy dx is. If that's your y, what is dy dx? Okay. Um, different people do chain rule different ways. This involves a chain rule. I like to start with the big function, the exponential function. Derivative of exponential function is indeed itself e to the 0 0.1 x squared. Right? But then for the chain rule part, 
then you take the derivative of the innermost function. And what is that derivative? 0.2x. Sorry, are y'all awake yet? Okay. That's its derivative. Okay? And that's also good for minus infinity infinity. Okay. That's written rather strangely. Yeah. For some reason, I sunk it down. Didn't mean to. I think I just didn't leave enough room there. Okay. Now, if you'll notice this, this dy dx is equal to this part right here is y, isn't it? That's exactly what y is. And this says this is equal to 0.2x times y, right? There's a differential equation, isn't it? Okay? Good for all values of x. Now, is that good for all values of y as well? Say again? Why not? If you go back to this, how does the exponential function work? Uh, never, go negative. never goes negative. You're absolutely right. In fact, never goes to zero either. It's approaching zero as x gets very, 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 very large. Oh, no, it doesn't, does it? Huh. I was going to say negatively, but even then, it, it doesn't. But yeah, it never reaches zero and never goes negative. So the y is going to be greater than zero. It would be zero comma infinity. But the x is just from all. But you see, we usually don't worry about the range as much as we do the domain. <clears throat> but that indeed is a differential equation. Um, what if we hadn't done all this stuff and someone just handed you that and said, can you solve this? That's what solving a differential equation is. Now, we know where it came from, so we know where it came. But in this course, we will then get to, if that's what was given to us, how do we go about solving it? And there are several ways to do so. Okay? Uh, so how do you solve an equation such as one for a function over y is equal to v of x? Well, here's a definition. Now, neither one of you have your books today, is that right? Or, uh, Victor, do you have an e-book? Is that what you're looking at? Oh, okay. All right, so neither one, so I'll write it down here. Um, the equation that we made up in one is called a differential equation, this thing right here, okay? And before proceeding any further, let's consider a more precise definition of the concept. I think I will go to a clean page, just so it won't be as crowded. An equation, and I abbreviate like crazy, an equation containing, that's containing, the derivatives, that's a derivative, of one or more unknown functions, unknown functions, okay, or dependent variables, that's dependent variables, the AR is variables, with respect to one or more independent variables, with respect to is WRT, with respect to one or more Independent variables, again, VAR is variables, is said to be a differential equation. DE is going to be differential equations throughout this course, okay? Differential equations. The book even uses that sign.
Now, <clears throat> this covers a lot more ground than we're going to cover. Okay? Uh, in general, in general, we're just going to most of the time deal with one function or independent or dependent variable. Okay, just one at a time. This says one or more. And for almost certain, we're going to only going to deal with one independent variable at a time. Otherwise, we'll be in the partial differential equations, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, so this is just called the differential equation in its most generic form, but we're not going to quite cover all that, okay? To talk about them, we classify differential equations according to three things. Type, that is really ugly. Let me rewrite that. Type, order, and linearity. Okay? Now, there are two types of differential equations. Okay? These two types are ordinary and partial we're only going to deal with ordinaries. So we're dealing with ODEs, Ordinary Differential Equations. When you see that, ODE, that's not singing you a ballad or something. No, that's uh, Ordinary Differential Equation. Only kind we're going to do. Partials, different story, upper level math course. Okay. Order. Your order is a ordinal number. First order, second order, third order, higher order, something like that. Okay? In fact, anything above a first order is called a higher order. Okay? So those are just ordinal numbers. First, second, third, fourth, fifth, whatever. Linearity, again, only two possibilities. It's either going to be linear or nonlinear. Okay, only two possibilities there. Okay, so the classification by type uh, is going to be either ordinary differential equations, ODEs, or partial differential equation, PDEs. And guess what? We're not going to, they may show us some examples or so of partial differential equations, but generally we're not going to deal with those. Uh, maybe some of our techniques will drag some in, but we are not going to be solving partial differential equations from scratch. Okay. So let's do the first example here. Now this is really, really straightforward, easy stuff. Uh, dy dx is plus 5y is equal to e to the x. Okay? What type of differential equation is that? Ordinary. There's, that's just a derivative no partial derivatives. That's what makes it ordinary. If you have d by d, that's ordinary. If you have the partial symbols, now that's something that, Victor, I don't know if you've even run into before, but that's an ordinary difference. If the only derivatives in there are d by d somethings, then it's ordinary. Okay. Now, while yeah. While we're here, let's go on and hit these two. Is that, what is the, uh, 
uh, order of that different. Uh, no. Yeah. The type, the order. What's the order of that differential equation? D by dx is first derivative, first order. Okay? Now, the issue of linear or nonlinear. I'm jumping ahead here, but I see why waste this perfectly good example and not use it, okay? Now, what makes it linear or nonlinear is the dependent variable, not the independent variable, the dependent variable. What is your dependent variable? Second. Yeah. Why? And x is the independent variable. Doesn't matter what you do with the x. It's no sweat. Okay? It's what you're doing with the y. And everything you're doing with the y. Here you just have y by itself. And that y by itself is not squared or cubed or to the half power or the three quarters power or any other power. It's just to the first power, right? Here you took a derivative of that y. And it is just to the first power. Okay? And you don't have the y times the dy. That would then not be linear. Okay? So this is linear in that both that everything that has a y in it is to the first power. That's to the first power, that's to the first power. Who cares about e to the x? That's your independent variable. Not a linear function anyway. <laughs> okay. But we're not caring about that. We only care about the other. Okay? Now the third thing is its linearity. Wait. Yeah, that was linear. I'm sorry. It's an ordinary differential equation, a first order differential equation, and a linear differential equation. Okay, how about this one? d2y dx squared minus dy dx plus 6y is equal to 0. Whoa, man, can you believe this? Already out of time. Okay. What can you tell me about that? What order is what? Uh, what type is it? Ordinary. Ordinary differential equation. There's no partial derivative anywhere there. Okay. What's the order of that differential equation? Second order. Maximum derivative is the second derivative. And linear or nonlinear. No, no, it's linear. This is not, okay, if this thing had a square by it, or this thing had a square by it, or even that thing had a square by it, that would be nonlinear. These are also first power, first power, first power. Second order, the first power. First order, the first power, linear. I mean, the, the constant, well, whatever you call it. It's y. Okay, the zeroth derivative. Okay, uh, but to the first Okay, those are all ordinary differential equations. That's all they really want us to do. We did a little bit more. Next time we'll pick up with example 1b. Any questions so far?